In a world where smaller smartphones are becoming less and less popular or they don't get that uh, respect they deserve when it comes to having the best of the best specs, there are a few devices to choose from that tick all those boxes of a great smartphone. The Pixel 8 and the iPhone 15 are one or two of those devices. I've had them since launch day of 2023 and I've seen its many highs and its many lows and I think it is finally time to share my thoughts. Also, huge thanks to Magback for sponsoring this video. Let's get into it. Hey guys, I'm KJ and I've had a blast using both the Pixel 8 and the iPhone 15 simultaneously. Now, whoever said these two ecosystems can coexist in the same house clearly lied. However, I do find myself wishing Google adopted a few things from Apple and vice versa. If you're looking for a compact phone that is also comfortable to hold, I think the Pixel 8 is up there with the best of the best. They did make some great changes and not so great changes at the same time. The flat display with the rounded corners is something more budget smartphones should start doing because it reduces every single hand fatigue and just makes using the phone a bit worthwhile on a daily basis. Smaller hands or not, your thumb can reach all the four corners of your screen without having any issues and it also weighs about 187 grams, making this light but comfortable at the same time. Now where the Pixel 8 sort of dropped the ball in my opinion is the back of the phone. So you see, the iPhone 15 and the Pixel 8 both have a glass back but Apple did something slightly different than what was expected. Instead of having a glossy finish like the Pixel 8, they instead made the back of the phone have some sort of a matte finish or a smooth finish, giving your hands a more relaxed feel when you're holding the phone. Obviously, different strokes for different folks and some may not care about this, You'd be surprised how many people don't care but if you're spending your hard-earned money on a phone for the next three to four years then you do want something that will make you feel comfortable every single time so the question is who won this round it is hard to say design like i always say is a very subjective case and just because i like one doesn't mean the other one is bad that being said i do prefer the design of the pixel 8 the flat display and the rounded corners plus the color choices google gave us exceed that of the iPhone 15 in my opinion. So the Pixel 8 will take this round. I remember when the iPhone 15 was released, some people asked me the best case they could use because they didn't want to carry their phones out naked. And I think after a lot of thinking, I have that sorted out in this video because this segment or the portion of this video is sponsored by MacBack. They were kind enough to send their MagSafe compatible cases for the iPhone 15 with their MacBack MagSafe wallets. Try saying that three times fast. Now I'm not joking, this is one of the smoothest cases to touch for your iPhone 15 with the matte finish and it also provides 360 protection with up to six feet. So if you're clumsy as I am, then this will save your phone more times than you can count. It is also MagSafe compatible, so you can slap as many MagSafe accessories as you like, like the MagSafe wallet or the MacBack wallet, for example. It is sleek, it is elegant, and a multifunctional wallet if you're always on the go. If this is something that you're interested in, click the link in my description right now and also use my code KJOS15 at checkout to get a 15% discount. Huge thanks to MagBack for sponsoring this video. Okay, so the displays are great, but after six months, I am leaning towards the iPhone 15 because of one thing, and that is the brightness. Let me explain. The Pixel's display was one of the biggest upgrades in 2023 if you compare the Pixel 7 to the Pixel 8. The brightness was increased from 1400 nits on the Pixel 7 to 2000 nits on the Pixel 8. Also fixed is the adaptive brightness, it instantly responds to darkness or extreme brightness from the sun and is pretty intuitive. Now the iPhone on the other hand also has an increase to 2000 nits of max brightness but six months later, the iPhone is much more visible under direct sunlight. I'm not even sure how that is physically possible or even hardware possible, but it was easier to navigate the iPhone 15 outside than the Pixel 8. Now, apart from the brightness, there are two key differences between these two phones. One is the lack of an always on display, and two is a higher refresh rate. The Pixel 8 has 120 hz refresh rate, which means you get a smooth scrolling through your phone and have an overall better experience. On the iPhone 15, it still has a 60 hz display, and the difference is like day and night. I have also come to realize that most people might not care, but if we're going to get a better, or if you want to get a better experience, then the Pixel 8 is the phone to get. That can also be said about the lack of an always on display on the iPhone 15. 
half the time when I'm working and I need to know the time or if my phone vibrates, I just have a glance on my pixel and I can see what the notification is. With the iPhone 15, you need to either pick it up or double tap your screen each time. Of course, if you're using the iPhone 15 in isolation, then you really get used to it. But using it side by side, another phone that has an always on display, it was an annoyance that happened time and time again. Regardless of the iPhone 15 lacking all these features, it is still a great display. The colors are accurate. And if we're keeping it 100, I don't think any company right now makes bad displays. They're all good in my opinion. That being said though, the Pixel 8s will take this round because of that high refresh rate and the always on display. The positive side effect of not having a high refresh rate or an always on display is the battery life. Comfortably, I get eight hours of screen on time on the iPhone 15. The only time I've had any sort of battery drain was when I was using the cameras to take pictures and videos, and that can easily be said about the Pixel 2, which gave me about six hours, maybe seven hours if I'm having a good day. I don't play a lot of mobile games. I don't think or intend to play mobile games, but I can say both will run games very smoothly without any, you know, the throttling or even severe battery drain. However, if you do want a longer period or if you do want your phone to last longer, then the iPhone 15 is the way to go. All right, if we're talking about software experiences and how it performs, it is hard to not talk about AI, something Google is currently the leader in. However, though, there has been bad press when it comes to Gemini, and to be fair, they are hilarious, but apart from that, my experience with the Pixel 8 and the software experience has been pretty good. We can spend all day talking about Tensor and how Tensor is in a great chip, but I would like to give credit to Google for actually creating their own chip, their, their own ecosystem that makes their phones run the way they want it to run. Because when, I, when you really look at it or when you really critically look at it, if we're talking about the scrolling, the animations, opening apps, amongst other things, Tensor has been pretty good. It doesn't, it doesn't mess up in any way possible. RAM management works on time, apps open on time, videos open on time. Everything just is a smooth experience. Now, if we want to go beyond those surface level things, if I can call it that, which are also important, then there are a few key areas when you begin to notice the limitations of Tensor. Like some of the AI features are slow to implement like Magic Editor and how it takes a few seconds for your pictures to process each one at the same time. With the iPhone 15, it has the A16 Bionic chip, which is the same chip that was in the iPhone 14 Pro, if I remember, but performance has been sturdy and consistent. It might not have all the AI features like Google does uh, with the Pixel 8s, but what it lacks in unique features, it gains in its own ecosystem which is undefeated at the moment. Now, this feels like an iOS and Android thing and picking a winner is, is kind of stupid, if I'm being honest, because again, one does something better than the other and vice versa. So because of that, I'm gonna give this round a tie. And finally, the most important category on this list, the cameras. The iPhone 15 and the Pixel 8 have dual cameras, but regardless of whatever megapixels they have, this category is the most divisive amongst my viewers and for good reason. The Pixel 8 has true tone, which means it will get my exact skin color, and I think it nails it with each picture that it's taking, but with the iPhone 15, it reduces my shadows, makes me look darker than I should be, but I get comments that I look better on the iPhone 15. I'm not sure why. You see why I said this is a very subjective category. Personally, I'll take the Pixel's image processing every single day. Now for the main sensor, the iPhone 15 is much more vibrant and adds color than the Pixel 8. Both have great details and I think this all comes down to preference like I've been saying. They both have a telephoto lens and are great within their own right, but the background blur on the Pixel 8 feels much more natural. The ultra wide is also good on both phones. The iPhone 15 gathers more detail with each image that it's taking, but if we're being honest, their ultra wide cameras are so good I can't really tell the difference. Video recording, the iPhone 15 shoots better video than the Pixel 8. That hasn't changed so far in the last few years. I did a full camera comparison between these two phones that goes really in depth on which of these cameras are better for certain situations. So if you wanna see that, I'll leave a link down in the description or at the end of the video. With all that being said, which phone offers the best value? The Pixel 8 is $699, while the iPhone 15 is $829, and that is a $130 difference. From my experience, the Pixel 8 does offer the better value. It has a better display, better features, arguably a better picture-taking camera, and of course, it is cheaper than the iPhone 15. 
Value does differ, however. Of course, if you're in the Apple ecosystem, then getting the iPhone 15 just makes a lot of sense. On the other hand, if you're in neither of those things and you're looking for a phone to give you more for less, then the Pixel 8 is the way to go. But that is just one man's opinion, and I'd like to hear yours. Is the iPhone 15 the better valued phone, or is the Pixel 8 the best budget phone in 2024? Comment down below and let me know. Like and subscribe if you got any value from this. I am trying to hit 30,000 subs at the end of the year. I'm grateful for the platform you guys have given me. Thank you guys for watching. My name is KJ, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.